All right, it's a little bit quiet in here because everybody's going to go to lunch. We got everything cleaned up best we could. We can't come get it perfect. Now we can lay these two back in here. And they have to go in together. So line them up. Drop them in. All that's connected. You can see it spin. I'm going to turn the input shaft. Which is not actually in gear. But I can stop it from spinning because the pushes aren't engaged in there. So let's run our silicone. Probably going to have to clean it. Oh, maybe I just need to talk louder. I don't know. All I know is my audio is terrible. I got a wire ran to here charging my light now. I got to watch out for that. I'm going to run our beater silicone. Light bead all the way around here. And grab our cover. And line everything up. Did the four on the back, tighten them all down one and ten. Get them started. So the same thing, just gonna run these down. That should be good and tight. Because this thing has some power to it. Four, three, eight, two, and I, can, I can break the load back too for this thing. Alright. And then we've got our one bolt. It has to be tight with a wrench. There just ain't no way around that. And that bolt is right. Up underneath here. Okay. Let's see if my seal installer is in here. Should be, yep. Next. One seal installer. There should be two. Two of these. I want to see one. Ah, oh, there it is. Right from me. Okay. We're going to use that slide hammer one more time. And we're just going to come down. Go inside the seal. And lock on the edge. And just tap it up. So it takes a screwdriver or something and try to pry in there. Ahead and replace those two seals. Now we're just gonna take our seal, put it in place, make sure it's nice and flush, and tap her down. Pull it bottom out. That's installed. This one is for our inner seal or our Torque converter seal, front pump seal, whatever you want to call it. We'll clean it up too, even though it's not that bad because I cleaned all this that was on the table already. And it should fit right over this. And this slides down over our shaft. So we can tap that one in.
it's actually this lip hitting the outside here and you can see how it's got the offset to drive it in just a little bit deeper and that gets our seals installed it's time to put the valve body in so let's get ready for that all right so here's how your valve body is going to come your valve body kit we got a new gasket We've got this sleeve over the top. We've got all our new seals to go in it. A new pickup tube slash strainer. And we've got this because the CVT or the TCM has to be flashed this valve body because that's how tedious all the different solenoids and all are in it this will program it so that it knows the flow rate of all those solenoids how much current to provide to them or what duty cycle to provide the different ones to be able to get the gear that it needs and then we also got new stickers to go on there with the part number or serial numbers for the valve body that will go on the outside of the transmission. So, get that out and start putting it in. Alright, we got our new valve body over here. It is also double sealed in two separate bags. We've got our seals that we're going to need. And if it had the old style valve body in it, we would also have to install this new bracket. But we've already got the new style in there. And that's the one seal that we need. That's going to go right here. same on both sides so you don't have to worry about getting it correctly orientated. I'll show you what I'm talking about. It's got a little lip on it. I don't know if that'll focus, especially me wearing black gloves and a black seal, but there's a lip on each side. It's the same on both sides. So you can just put that in there and it will fit tightly in place. Now we can open our valve body. That's the bag number one. And that's the bag number two. Now when I'm driving bolts for this, I'm going to leave this valve body set on this plastic so I don't want it to get contaminated with any dirt. So we're going to leave it right there on top of the plastic. I'm going to go ahead and grab a couple bolts. Remember when we took it out, we got some that are shorter, some that are longer. And I'm going to leave my two short ones I'm going to set in a different spot. There's one of them. Leave. Yep, there's our other one. That's our two short ones. All the rest of them are the same except two really, really short ones that you're not going to get mixed up with. I'm going to grab a couple of these. Take my valve body. And just gotta make sure this is in the right spot too. Just slide that in. What's going on with our light flickering over there? And start some bolts. Make sure we start our longer ones. Our light can't decide if its battery is too low and it wants to flash or not. I need to 
little bit stronger charger for it. You know, this is a long one. That's going to be one of our shorter ones. And each one of these are marked. So you know that they are for holding the valve body in and not for holding the valve body together. Now, these are covered in oil. So if you are going to use power tool to run it in, which you are technically not supposed to, because they are so easy to damage. Well, I don't think we quite got that harness in the right spot. That might be what we were catching on. It's in the right spot. It's a nice, it's not a breach. This is our transmission temperature sensor, which is our transmission fluid. Start that one. I'm going to take one of our short ones because it's going to be under the strainer. I'm just going to start that in there. You know, usually this fits. There we go. Much tighter. There, now that reaches better. I'll go ahead and grab my other short one that I know goes right here. All these can't be tightened down yet because we got to put that strainer in. And this is one of them that runs through the strainer. So I don't want to put it in quite yet. We can do this one right beside it. And what we're going to be left with is two long bolts to hold our strainer in. And we got two long bolts to hold the strainer in. two short ones in the back that yeah, like I said would originally have a bracket some of the older ones very very carefully tighten these down now if you're not used to using power tools I do not recommend doing this because you will strip these in about two seconds I just will lightly tighten them My way back. So it does not take a lot. You will strip those. That I can promise you. This sign actually recommends not using power tools on these, using a ratchet. So now we're ready for our pickup tube slash strainer. And it is also double wrapped. Make sure that your A ring is on it right there. And slide it into place. There it is. And there's our two more long bolts that go through there to hold the strainer in place. Now I left this one loose intentionally. I have to go through both of those. Now we can tie these down. Right on down in place. Don't forget to put this on here. 
or use a rod that controls and it will only go like one way so if you get it the wrong way you should know you should be able to tell it's too high we gotta get that line up in that flat spot in there just like that put our lock washer on Oh, down and start it. And then I'm going to move my shift linkage. Actually, I'm going to hold it with my hand. Reach around here and grab it. Sure, it's working. And now we are ready for our transpan. Just going to double check everything's here. That's plugged in. That's in the right spot. If it's in the wrong spot, your transpan will hit it. I don't know if you can see down here. That transpan is missing it. Alright, and there is two little dial pins that I want to here. Good. Same thing, there's two little ball pins for this to line up with. Make sure everything's flat. We're not catching any. The harness down here. Get that clear of the rock. That way, and it's that. All of our bolts are started, now we can start tightening them. So we'll start about the middle. Work our way back and forth. Then we go forward. And there we go. Double check. And I got all the ones on the bottom. And we'll stand this thing back up the way it's supposed to be set. Bring it in. Yeah, that was a call off that board back there. Stand it up. Pushing the whole table. So I gotta get back. This back side. And you see that bolt right there. That's for that pump. I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up. And then put our two sensors back in. And both of these are identical, so you can put them here. Or you can put it here. There are the same exact sensor, same exact part number. Oh. And that's pretty much it. That's cleaning the thing. to do with the same stuff which I'm out of and since this is warranty I only get one bottle clean it all up I do still have to pop this seal out pop the new one in on the back here no we did the front we haven't done the back yet Do that the same way. I'm just going to use the other adapter on the screw driver. 
grab that, take that one off, and put our other one on here. This one is a little bit bigger, and it will slide just like the other one. It'll slide right on here. Like so. A little bit harder because we're at an angle instead of setting flat, which I could set it flat. And maybe just pop that on. Over here, that solid hit. And that's it. Back together, we're ready to go back in the car. So before I get too far, I'm going to show you this is the transmission we rebuilt going back in this Altima. You can see the new sub-assembly here. And this is the car we're putting it in. So I can show y'all the rest of the procedure that you have to do whenever you install this transmission. Alright, so we just finished installing the transmission and we're going to plug in our scan tool down here which I know it's dark and we're going to start this thing up run it through the gears gear engage so now I'm going to go ahead and open my scan tool raise the car up in the air this is how you're going to set your fluid level Temperature. Our consult. Get that open. What I want to do here is go to my fluid temperature. I want to monitor fluid temp. We want this to get up to 104. And once we're at 104, what we want to see. Low trickle coming out there at 104 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's going to tell us that our fluid level is correct. That's also how you check your fluid level. You get the CVT up to 104 degrees Fahrenheit, with the car running, pop that plug out, and make sure you get just a little trickle. That's excessive. It's warming up, and temperature affects it a lot. If you're too hot and you do it, the transmission is not going to have enough fluid in it. If it's too cold and you do it, the transmission is going to have too much fluid in it. Alright, so we've hit 100 degrees Fahrenheit, which is within the range we want to be, 100-104. Over here, what we're going to see So, next, we're going to go in here, 
I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go work support. We're gonna clear our deterioration, which is basically tells us when we need to change our do a transmission service. We can read that since we've already replaced all the fluid. All right, now we want to erase our learning values. So we're erasing what the TCM has learned. So I'm gonna hit start and see it's gonna tell me have the engine stop. I want the vehicle in reverse, brake pedal pressed, throttle press between half and a quarter. And we'll hit start, completed. And before I do the engine clutch point learning, I'm gonna write my new characteristics for the valve body to the TCM. So I've got to install my disc. And then we're gonna select our DVD drive if it's still connected. There it is. Select the file that's on it. Open. And this is gonna be pretty much the same process. You never wanna do this if the serial numbers don't match. So we're in reverse, brake pedal and gas pedal. Hit start, executing. Now it's gonna tell me to turn off the ignition. And it's beeping like that because the car's in reverse. Switch it back on. Next, shift to park. Let go of everything and hit right. And until you hit right, I'll show you right here. You're gonna have I key system error and you're also gonna notice that it doesn't say what gear it's in. And we're gonna hit right and park pops back up. And we get completed over here. All right, and we can hit in there. Now I can start it up. I'm gonna go ahead and go back. That's because we had our car switched off, but you'll see these codes have gone in the past, except for one. So we can erase them. And then we're gonna go back into our transmission, work support, and do our forward clutch point. So, shifter in neutral, we're gonna hit start and put it straight to drive. Up. The test conditions are not met. So let's see why. You know what, I'm wondering if the part number in this transmission is up to date. It may need to be reprogrammed before this will work. We'll try it one more time. If it don't go through, I'm gonna have to, oh, you know what? I had the air conditioner on. That could be it too. Nope. Okay. So let's go home real quick. And let's make sure there's not an update for this transmission. Click on reprogramming. Confirm. Next. And it's gonna go through all this that y'all have already seen, so I'll come back when everything's loaded. Okay, so we've loaded through our system call. It's all done. This is what it's gonna bring up. We're gonna go to our TCM transmission. I'm going to click right here. I'm going to see if we got an update. So I'm going to hit reprogramming. I'm going to save my current part number, which shows up right here. Confirm. Okay, so it gives me two options. 
two different part numbers that go for this. So both of them are new logic. All right, one's for a model year 17, one's for a model year 16. I don't currently have the ticket, so let me get the ticket and see. I believe ours is a 16. Actually, let me just look at the VIN right up here. Yes, ours is a 16. I don't know why it didn't pull that from the VIN automatically. So here we go. This is our current part number, 31036. That's going to stay the same on both of them. And the last part is 3TEOD. Our new one's going to be 3THOD. So the E's changing. Hit next. Next. Make sure everything in the car switched off. So we'll switch the car off. Ignition on. Now we'll hit start. And that's going to bring me to this page here. So anytime I do a reprogram, I've got to enter my personal information and password. I'm just unplugging that. I don't need it no more. So I got to enter my information in Nissan so that I can go through with the reprogram. So let me just type all that in. And then it's going to authenticate my credentials and begin the reprogram. And this is gonna take about 10 minutes. So we'll let that go through. And then we'll try our forward clutch point learn again. All right, so reprogram finished. We're gonna try again. Work support, forward clutch learn. And start, shift it to neutral. start again there we go hopper and drive all right now we're going to shift to park turn the engine off hit end and we've got to do it again so start engine back up start I'm going to shift to neutral hit start and this time I'm going to shift to reverse And now it's going to execute in reverse. All right, it's completed. Same thing. Shift to park. Shut the car off. Hit end. And now there's just a couple things I have to do for warranty purposes. Um, if you are doing this and you noticed that it's taking longer than what it took in the video, that's because I did skip through some of that or I did skip through how long it takes to do that reprogram or the forward clutch point learning because it does actually sit there a while sometimes just saying executing. All right, I want to print out this showing that we have no codes for warranty purposes and there's Quite a bit of other paperwork that goes along with this that has to go to Nissan. And then we'll take this thing out for a test drive. All right, let's go see how this thing drives. I do have new camera and all coming so I can make some better videos instead of just using my phone so far reverse seems to be working good
I already hear something scraping. Hang on. Which side? Let's try again. That was just a back and plate scrubbing. Solve that. This is where I was putting the CV axle in. Just slightly bent that back and plate just a little bit and it was scrubbing the rotor. All sleeks, don't hear no suspension rattling going over these small bumps. Transmission's not making any weird noises. And so far, right in here, it seems to be, if you want to call it shifting, it seems to be shifting correctly. Even though all it's really doing is just changing gear ratios some pulleys oh yeah you see our rpms come up i don't know if y'all can actually see the rpm gauge but our rpms come up to a certain point they stay there and the vehicle accelerates and that's basically just the engine staying at a constant rpm and those pulleys changing sizes to increase our gear ratio to accelerate instead of the rpm going up us shifting to a higher gear rpms dropping coming back up shifting to another higher gear rpms drop come back up this thing i actually set at a steady rpm and just slowly increase the gear ratio to accelerate setting at 2,000 RPMs and accelerating. So that's a good sign. I'm having to drive careful so I don't knock my phone over. People behind me probably think I'm an old man out for a Sunday cruise. miles an hour, 1500 RPM. The torque converter clutch actually locks up at the, on these at 11 miles an hour. That's just to help with fuel economy. The CVT does help greatly with fuel economy because you can keep that engine in the optimum rpm hold it there and just change your gear ratio to accelerate so i averaged 35 miles to the gallon on that short trip we're going to go ahead and put this thing in a parking spot because it is done we got somebody trying to come out it is hard getting out of this parking lot So we're going to call this part three of our CVT rebuild. That will be part three will be the final part. The transmission is back in the car and the car is driving. Hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, hit that like button. If you hated it, hey, tell me. I'm trying to improve. I know the audio in most of these videos were pretty rough. <laughs> I've got a new camera coming and uh, hopefully gonna get a, a wireless mic to kind of help with some of the audio 
whenever I'm not in a car and I'm outside working on uh, some of the separate components outside of the car. Like for instance, rebuilding the transmission outside the car because it is loud and I shot with everybody hammering and using impacts. So please don't uh, don't hate me for the audio. I'm sorry. I know the audio in here is, probably sounds great, but uh, the audio actually building the transmission was terrible. So, like I said, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button. If you didn't, let me know. Let me know how I can improve. Um, if you want to see more content like this, subscribe and I'll keep posting. Um, I know it's been a while, but like I said we've been busy and it's kind of slowing down right now. So I'm going to get back to posting. If you see me stop posting for a little while, it's because I've gotten too busy to, and, uh, I don't have time to film in between vehicles. So thanks again for watching.